the run page. Uh, this is where we display information from the current and previous runs. Uh, you'll you'll see that the uh, the chart is like a, a history of the previous run, so it shows like all the other intervals and all the the counts in CPM for those specific intervals. Well, large display will show like calculated concentration and and stuff like that once the run is completed. Uh, setup is where you actually change the settings for the run. So you can go through one of the five uh, presets, essentially, the standard continuous system background, quasi, standard grab, and monitor check. Uh, each have their own applications. Uh, some are needed to set up other ones. So like monitor check would be used for checking the device. And system background would be used for checking like a, an active cell. Um, so as an example, we'll set, leave it at standard continuous. We'll just write test. Uh, you can fill in the operator name, but it doesn't affect the results. It's just for the spreadsheet. The sample collected date is mostly just useful for the uh, standard grab method because it, it's part of the equation. Uh, start date and time is for when you want to set a specific delay. So you can set a delay by time in uh, hours, minutes, or seconds, or you can set it by date, or you can have no delay whatsoever. Uh, you can change the interval length and the amount of intervals to collect and intervals to discard for starting from the first one. Um, you can also activate a non-stop mode for standard continuous that lets it just run uh, as long as you want it to, essentially uh, infinitely. Uh, flow rate is just for the spreadsheet, but it has to do with the... Uh, the pump value so you know what sort of uh, pump flow you had, uh, which is not calculated by the device, but uh, measurable via uh, external pump. Uh, the pump edit menu lets you adjust the pump power for when the device turns the pump on when you're using the, uh, the pump up here. The detector menu is where you select your current uh, input for the nozzle that attaches to the PMT. So in this case, we're using a source. And this source is a 6000 model. So I'm going to go here in the detector menu. And I'm going to add a new detector. I'm going to add a bogus serial number for now. The model number is a 6000 source. The calibration date aren't important right now, but uh, it will automatically set it for a year from whatever date you select. The activity DPM on this source is 3936 DPM. We're going to save that, and then we're going to use it. And you can see that that is now the currently selected detector. So I'm going to attach it to the top. You can also see that since I haven't gone to save the changes, it asks me if I want to save them. So I click yes. Then there's the file page where I can view all the previous files that we've run. And you can also open up and view them similar to a CSV format or, or um, Excel. But uh, you cannot edit it in this page. You'd have to download it onto a separate device to do that. Then there is the settings page, which is for things like screen brightness and uh, dim options. There's also the audio menu here for the beep volume for when the method ends and for the alarm for when the alarm is triggered. There's also security settings for the pins. There's also 
network settings for the device. So you can connect it to other, uh, so you can connect it to a network and use other devices to interface with the device. You also have the units menu for changing units of measure, time for date time settings, an about page, which gives you information on uh, connectivity, also the software version. So you can see that uh, here the serial number is 190202. That's what we would use to connect to it uh, in a browser, or you would use the IP address, but there's currently none right now because it's not connected to anything. You can also add owner information for uh, informa for detailing on the spreadsheets, essentially. So when you hand the spreadsheet off to someone else, you can tell who the device's owner is and who is operating the, the device by, by keeping track of that. There's also completion alerts. When a method is completed, it uh, throws up a pop-up saying that the method is done. But if you don't want that on your device, for instance, like say you have it in a chamber and you don't want to have to uh, remove the notification every time, you can turn the completion alerts off. It will no longer give you alerts for completions. It will still give you alerts for alarms, though, because that is how you disable the alarm. On the run page, I'm just going to hit start real quick just to demonstrate the device actually counting and gathering information. And you'll notice that the chart page and large display page are now set to the current run. This information doesn't fill out until the interval is complete. And these two are essentially always active.